Hello, everybody. This is Miss Kate. I'm a youth services librarian at the Jersey City Free Public Library. And we'll just wait another minute or two, let people trickle in. All right. I know that it's kind of the end of the school day, so people kind of trickle in. Right. I think we're ready to go. Uh oh, my video has been stopped this whole time. I didn't even notice. <laughs> uh, I will stop sharing my screen. And hello. I am Kate Davis. I'm a youth services librarian at the Jersey City Free Public Library. And today we are joined by Nigel Carroz from the Innocence Project. And this, sorry, my dog. Um, <laughs> this um, presentation is in conjunction with our middle school author talk. So we've been reading from the desk of Zoe Washington by Janae Marks for this week of February, or week, this month of February. And if you've read the book and you're familiar that she is working to get her dad who's been wrongfully imprisoned for her whole life out of jail and she uses the innocence project to um, help him and you can read to find out how how that works um, but we're lucky enough to have a speaker to tell us uh, you know this was a fiction story that we're reading but obviously this is an issue that affects lots of people every day um, so we are lucky to have, oh, and I realize my spotlighted. Okay, so, <laughs> um, that 
So the Innocence Project it, it exonerates innocent people through DNA testing and reform, and they work to reform the criminal justice system to prevent future injustices. Um, so we'll be learning more about how exactly they do that today. And so we have, uh, how would you like everyone to speak to you? Nigel, Mr. Nigel, Mr. Q. Nigel's fine, Nigel's okay. fine, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have Nigel with us today to tell us a little bit more about, um, you know, the reality of the Innocence Project in relationship to what we've been reading in our fiction story. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for joining us today. I've been really excited about hosting you. Yes, thanks for having me. <laughs> and I believe that you're in our neighborhood. Are you in New York? Because I, I am in New York. Different yes. areas where the mm -hmm. Innocence Project works. Yes, yes. So I'm in I'm in Brooklyn. I'm um, I'm actually based out of uh, the, we have uh, Innocence Network partners all over the country and all, and actually all over the world. We have about uh, 69 of those. So oh, wow. uh, yeah, so, but I'm based um, in, we call it the main office in, in New York City. So I'm coming from Brooklyn, yes. <laughs> well, yes, we're neighbors. So yes. parts of Jersey City, we can see you. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, well, I'll, I'll hand over the, the microphone to you. Let okay. Me spotlight you so people um, see you and get rid of mine. Um, I'll let you take over. Okay, great, great, great. So just happy to be here. Um, so my name is Nigel Kiros. I'm a, a field organizer and attorney at the Innocence Project. Um, so uh, what, what we do, um, we free wrongfully convicted people uh, through DNA evidence, and we also uh, seek to, to achieve reforms in the system um, in order to stop uh, any more wrongful convictions from happening. Um, so it's kind of like we do two things. We actually help people get, get people out of jail, like, like if you read the book, how, how Zoe um, did, and then we actually go back to try to get the laws changed in order for these things to not happen again. Um, so we've been going, um, we've been in formation for over uh, about 25 years. Um, the first DNA exoneration was in 1989. So um, DNA is just like your genetic, uh, I guess your genetic fingerprints, everybody's DNA is different. Um, so um, people were being, um, uh, being sent to jail because their DNA was found. Um, at a crime scene. And um, we, we thought to ourselves, like our founders thought back then, um, uh, Barry Sheck and Peter Neufeld, if people are being um, incriminated or people being arrested because of DNA evidence, surely there are people in jail who, if they hadn't used DNA evidence back then because they're, uh, they were in jail for so long, maybe if we test it, um, they, wouldn't, they would be actually proven innocent. So that's where uh, the Innocence Project came in. So we basically look for, for cases where people are saying that, you know, we didn't do this and trying to get back into court in order to use the, the genetic fingerprint, the DNA, in order to, to, to disprove that these people are, are did the crime. Um, so we've been doing that um, since 1992. Um, and then in 2004, we became our, our, own, uh, our own nonprofit uh, law firm. Um, so to this day, there have been 375 people who were let out of, um, who were let out of jail, who were in jail because they didn't do the crime and DNA proved them, uh, proved that they were innocent. So that's a lot of, that's a lot of folks. And, um, that's been about over in 37 states and, uh, and actually 21 of those people were on death row. So if, if they wouldn't have been uh, proven innocent, they might have died. So that's just that just shows how important it is to get everything right the first time. Um, and so uh, we have um, so out of these cases, 188 uh, of of these cases, the true perpetrator, the, the person who really did the crime, was found after the fact. So if somebody goes to goes to prison and they didn't do the crime, the person who actually did it more than likely is still free. 
And sometimes we see, unfortunately, that they go on to commit other crimes. So that just that just shows how important it is to get it right the first time also. Um, so uh, on average, we see people serve 14 years and they go in on average about the age of 26, but we've had cases where people were young, were, were teenagers um, who've been uh, wrongfully convicted and you know served very, very long terms. So, <clears throat> So we, we see, we just see how, how that works and how that affects, how that affects people across the country. Um, I don't know if, if anybody had any questions or that I can answer or, or anything, but that's basically the, the rundown of what the Innocence Project does. I know um, you might have some questions that I can answer specifically. Yes, if there are any questions, feel free. You can type them, you can chat. Or you can unmute and let us hear your voice. How, like, like how long did it take for like, for you to be like, on a good amount of people to start, like the whole um, process? Okay, so what I'm getting is, is how long does it take for the process to go? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so usually on average, um, there it's probably about 10, 10 plus years for a person. So this is how it goes. A person is in who's who's in jail, they write into us. So they send a letter and they say, Hey guys, I've I'm in jail. I didn't do this. So I would like you to look at my case. So we start the whole process from there. It might take a little longer, it might take a little shorter. If the person is it's like a special circumstance, like let's say they're um, they're in jail for a really long time or they're on death row, then that might speed up the process. But on average, it takes about 10 years. So it takes a, a, a while because it takes a while to get through the court and stuff, but sometimes it's less. Um. Mm -hmm. That's a good question though, thank you. And kind of building on that question, um, after someone is exonerated, does the the state or the court do anything to, you know, repair the life that's been, you know, taken those 10 years? Do they offer anything? Yes, so that's a great question also. So um, currently there, there, there are 35 states that do have some sort of, uh, we just call it, you know, compensation um, because, you know, somebody's in, in, in prison and they don't have the chance to go to school probably or work and they've been in there for a long time so sometimes they come out with nothing so we have 35 states that 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 do um pay but we're always pushing that's that's one thing that we're always uh, always uh trying to change those laws in order that because we have 37 states as i said and only 35 of them have it so we want to have it in all 50 states just in case that somebody is 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 let out and doesn't have anything so that they can be able to get something. Are New York and New Jersey um, states that do give? Yes, okay. yes, they do, yes. Because yes, my do. next question is like, how can youth get involved in this and, and start helping out at a young age? Okay, so that's great. So with books like Zoe Washington, um, um, it definitely gets the youth um, interested in it. And we have, you know, we have like an, an email list um, for people, um, if they want to sign up at our website at innocenceproject.org and they send like emails and you can like write letters, um, to, uh, to, to politicians and your legislators. And they love to hear from young people because young, young people's voice voices are so powerful. Um, so that's a, that's a great, a great thing, um, to just write in and just, um, be able to talk to these people and let your voice be heard. What would be like the youngest age? Uh, that a person was wrongfully convicted? No, like to like register, I believe. Um, well, I don't think that there's a, a necessary, necessarily a youngest age, but if you're like in high school or junior high school, that's pretty, that's pretty good. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. As long as you have an email. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a link that you can share in case? Um, yes. Wants to... Do I have? Well, I don't have. Um... Or I can search for the link if anyone else has a question. Yeah, uh, I was trying to see if I had like a chat box so I could just type it in or just paste it. <laughs> but that works oh i do there we go there we go yes so innocenceproject.org um sign up all right i'm gonna send it in a second my computer's lagging a little bit <laughs> um yes so those are those are great questions um can you share um, like a case that was really powerful for you or one that the Innocence Project was involved in? Yes, so um, we had cases, I don't know if everybody's heard of the, um, the Exonerated Five. Those were uh, five kids in New York. They were aged 14 through 16 and they were wrongfully convicted when they were that young. Um, and um, that was a very um, important and sad case because these were all very, very young kids who didn't, you know, do what they were accused of and they were made to be villains and they were in, in prison uh, for over a decade for something that they didn't do. And they basically lost their childhood. So that's, a, that's one, one that really sticks out to me. think I have a, okay there we go if if a prisoner like wrote to you guys but like they were lying and saying that they were weren't that they didn't do the mm -hmm. crime, but they did how would you know if they did oh that's a great question so since all of our all of our cases have to do with DNA with the genetic fingerprint once we get that tested it's 99.99% .99 accurate. So if a person actually did it and it matches, then it 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 would show that they that they did it and they were lying at the in that in that case. So okay. that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's a great question though. Yeah, on that note, what is um, one of the trickier cases that you've worked on or the Innocence Project has worked on where maybe it wasn't so straightforward and it took a lot of thoughtfulness to prove someone innocent? Yeah, so we've had, um, we've had cases where, uh, where every, so every law, every state has a different law in order to get back into, um, into court. So there are certain states that have laws that say, if you pled, like if you pled guilty, if you admitted to doing it, then you can't get back into court. So that makes it tricky because a lot of times um, people are, are, are lied to in order to get them to admit something to be done. Sometimes they, they, they might be threatened or they might actually be um, you know, hit or, or be beat up and, and just being forced to confess. So when, when those cases come about and we have a state where they, they can't be let back in a, into court when they're guilty, um, if they, if they pled guilty, then it's a longer process because we have to go in, we have to change that law in order to make it so that that can be let in. And so we have to start from scratch basically and go step by step. And, you know, it's, sometimes it takes years for a law to change. So that's why it takes so long to exonerate somebody. And those are the more tricky ones where we have to change a law in order to get a person back in. Question. And do you find that now that uh, that groundwork has been established in some places that it's getting faster than 10 years or is it still just the court system it's going to take a long time? Sometimes it yes, yeah, sometimes it, it it still takes long, but a lot of states and some in a lot of cities actually, they have these things um, called um, conviction um, review units. So they will go without even us asking, they will look back at old convictions and see if there was anything 
that is kind of funny or messed up about it and they'll look into it themselves and then they would will help you know with our help get the person out of prison so that's pretty pretty uh pretty neat because now they're not sometimes in different places they're not even waiting for a person to write in they're like just checking to make sure everything is okay Do you have any more questions? If not, I have some some more. Yeah. Um, have you ever worked on a case where maybe there wasn't DNA? Mm. Um, then how would you prove innocence without the the fingerprints or? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So um, we don't do any any non DNA cases, but we do see like in our different network partners they do work with, with, with that type of stuff. So I've seen cases where they've, they've been, like in Chicago, they have like cases where six, 20 or 30 people are exonerated at one time, all because there was a, a really bad, uh, a really bad uh, police officer who has been known to, to lie or like make up stuff. Um, so, they can find like the person lied and all of the cases that they worked on, they lied and then they let everybody out at the same time. So it's it's pretty interesting that way. So yeah, there've been a lot of, there've been over 3000 exonerations and only 375 of them have been DNA. So most of the exonerations aren't even DNA, but that's just what we do. But yeah, there are other ways to be exonerated without DNA. Have you ever worked on like a case that um, had like two people's DNAs in it and they both had to go to jail, but like only one is innocent? Um, yes. So we have a we had a case. Um, this 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 um, gentleman, his name was Marty. His name is Marty Tankliff, actually. So he was really young. He was 16 and um, he came home and he found his mom and his dad really badly hurt. So he, his mom was already uh, gone, but his dad was really hurt. So he went over like what any other kid would do if you see your, 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 your parents hurt, runs over to try to help. So he ran over to try to help his, uh, help his dad and in helping his dad, the, his DNA got on his dad. So that was what was used to send him to jail. But a little after they found out that, you know, there was another person there who actually did it and they got that DNA and tested it. And that was why, how he was able to leave prison because he went to go help his dad and, be, and through all of that, that kind of got his DNA on his dad. So it's really, but that so he was he was let out of prison and he's actually a lawyer today um and he he actually still works with the innocence project so and there's a there's a happy ending to that i like how his name is marty and like i remember like from madagascar because he's <laughs> marty yes <laughs> that's one of my favorite movies <laughs> Do you mind sharing a little bit of your story of how you came to work with the Innocence Project? Yes, okay. So when I was in school, when I was in law school, um, I was able to, to intern with the Innocence Project. So that's basically working working with without pay, but it's like, you know, you're learning stuff. So I was able to work with them for a half a year. Um, so I was in the office every day and meeting everybody. And the cool thing about the Innocence Project is some of the people, they, um, some of the people that we help, some of our clients, they always come into the office. So it's really nice to meet people. Um, and, you know, some of them, you know, a lot of people there, everybody's really, really nice. And, you know, they became our, they became like friends and like close and sometimes like family. So I went back to school to finish school. And when I graduated, I was actually able to come back and work. So it was pretty neat. Um, 
so I kind of um, had like a little uh, a little early glimpse of the Innocence Project before I, I started working there. So that was pretty nice. <laughs> and if anyone here is interested in becoming a lawyer or even, well, I guess it's probably two different paths, becoming a lawyer for the Innocence Project and working for the Innocence Project. Mm -hmm. So um, what, what was the process to be a lawyer? And if you were in middle school or high school, what advice would you give to yourself knowing all the things that you've learned? Okay. Um, what I would give, well, it's always good to read because law school is a lot of reading. Um, um, and I always used to, I, I always used to read a lot as a kid and I really like like mystery books and stuff and like Sherlock Holmes and all that other stuff. So um, things like that, that's that though that is really interesting. And just, you know, read a lot, write a lot. That's always good. Um, and just just continue to study and and then you can do it. Like just just keep your mind to it. You can do anything that you put your mind to. That's my advice. Does anyone else have any more questions? I have a question. Mm -hmm. How do you decipher the difference between two people's DNA? Like what tools, what tools do you use? Um, so they have like DNA, and that's the cool thing about the Innocence Project also. You don't also, you don't only have to be a lawyer to work here. Um, so we have, we have scientists that work with us. So, and this is stuff that I kind of like don't know a lot about because I'm not a science scientist, but everybody's DNA is different and they have like different, they call it uh, genetic sequencing, the way that it, it matches up. So whatever, but the, the tools they use, they put the, the DNA side by side and then they're able to tell that way. Um, and so that's that's my just basic non-science scientist way of explaining it. <laughs> but yeah, so that's pretty much it. And and what other fields do you work with in the Innocence Project? So oh, obviously yeah. lawyers and scientists. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so so we have lawyers and science scientists. We have a communications department. So that's like our writers. Um, people who, who like to, to write and, and, you know, do blogs and stuff. Um, we have um, a, a finance department. So if you're like good with math, we have that also. Um, and we have a lot of, so we have finance, communications, legal, policy, which I work with also. And those are people who like to to work with with laws and government and stuff like that if that's what's what interests you we also have that um and yep that's it <laughs> do you have like a filing group that like file all the cases um yes so that's our intake department um so those are the intake is are the first people who um they're the most important people in the innocence project because they they are who get the letters so whenever somebody writes in it goes straight to the intake department and they read the letters and there's a lot of files we get over 2000 uh letters a year that's a lot of mail so they have is this to just new york or all of the all over all of well well this is just this is what comes to to the national office so yes so in this project we get over 2000 letters letters a year so you can imagine just how much mail comes every day so intake they have to read it you know make a file and keep everything up to date because they are the people who pick out the cases at first and like let us know who who's here and what they're saying and what their case is so we call them the intake department but they do do a lot of filing <laughs> And that kind of inspired me. So what is the process if someone wants to write yes. a letter? What happens after the intake? And how does it get to the end with hopefully a happy ending? So, so the person, a person first writes in, 
They send the letter to the intake department and, and, and they read it. Um, and it goes through a, a really, uh, a really close process because we want to make sure everything is right, that there's everything. Okay. We have to make sure that first it's a DNA case. If it isn't a DNA case, then we can send it to another one of our, our, our groups that does take DNA cases. So we sort them into DNA cases and we just make sure that we have it there. And then we have an investigations attorney who actually goes in and like investigates it. So if there's, there are people who are like witnesses and things, then the investigation attorney will reach out to them and in, uh, interview them. So if if there's there and we if if we find something there and we get good information then it goes to the legal department so then the legal department reads it and then they decide on if it's a good case and you know they 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 vote on that and once that happens then we we have the 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 long process which is probably the long process longest process of getting that case back in the court so a lot of times with courts, it's really hard to get back in a court. You have to have certain things. So we have to find those certain things in order to get, get back in the court. Either it's like new DNA evidence that they never tested or evidence that, yeah, just new evidence they never tested that has DNA on it or anything. And then we can, we're, we're able to get back in the court and have it tested. And then we have to have a new court date and kind of start from there in order to get the person exonerated. And for an example, like Zoe Washington, this case happened, uh, I think she turns 12 or 11 in the book. Mm -hmm. So where do people get this evidence this so long after? Is it just, it's been in a container somewhere and yes. has been evaluated? And, and so how do you learn about that? Is that the right? That's a, that's a good, yes. So that's, um, that's, pretty interesting too. Another thing that the, the investigations attorney does, they look at all the old evidence. So, and the intake department does this also. So many times when there's a crime, they take pictures. So they have these pictures and they keep them in evidence files and they look. So sometimes you look at a crime scene picture and you'll see like a shirt in the corner and you don't, and that shirt has never been tested. So you're like, okay, that shirt is there. Maybe it has DNA on it. So maybe we can go back and, and test it. So a lot of times these are old cases before DNA was used. So now it's like, and then even when DNA first started being used uh, back in the eighties, it wasn't as good as it is now. So now you can like get different types of DNA or better types of DNA from back then it's probably had to be a lot of whatever, a lot of material but now you can probably get it from just a little, little, little teeny bit now. So now it's like, okay, we have a little teeny bit. So now we can test it now. So that's how we, how we do it. And we're able to get new evidence. And we, we always hope that's another thing that we do. We try to pass laws in order to have, um, to have people keep evidence and not throw it out because you have to keep it just in case we go back and we have to look at it. Are there any more questions from our visitors? So for example, how many cases are you working on right now? Um, well, there's always, so we have about five different attorneys and all of them have over 20 cases. So at any time there could be all, over a hundred and a hundred or so cases going on, but some of them are older, some of them are newer. So it's not like we have to go to court every, like they have to go to court every day, but it's always in some, some phase of the process. So I would say over a hundred. Wow. Mm -hmm. Are there any more questions? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for answering all of our many questions. <laughs> um, and thank you for sharing the link. 
It's the Innocence, or sorry, Just Innocence Project at, or gosh, I can't talk today. <laughs> Innocenceproject.org slash get involved slash. So if anyone is listening to this later, then they can type that in to get involved because as Nigel pointed out, you're never too young or too old to join and they can always use people to be writing letters. Uh, can you remind us again, what are things that, you know, anyone can be doing to support the work of the Innocence Project? Um, yes, so just sign up to get involved and we'll send, we, we'll send emails. Um, and there's also like a lot of, a lot of um, um, just, just staying involved and, and, just, and just keeping up with what we're doing because we do a lot of stuff in New Jersey where, where we're speaking right now. Um, so, and there are a lot of people in New Jersey who have been wrongfully convicted and we always have something going on. And what would be like one of the hardest cases that would be harder to solve than other cases? Um, one of the harder cases, um, it would be something probably with, with, with multiple DNA. That's pretty tough because sometimes you have to figure out why this person's DNA was there. And sometimes they have a valid reason. A lot of times people might be wrongfully convicted if they come across somebody that's hurt and they come in and help like Marty did, then your DNA will be there. But you were, you weren't being a, you know, you weren't hurting the person, you were helping the person. So we've seen a lot of different cases where the, where that's happened. So then you have to find the person who actually did it and then test, test them to make, to, to see what happened. So that's a good question. But yeah, it's hard when you have multiple DNA and the DNA of the person who's wrongfully convicted has been there. That actually made me think of another question. So do you have any advice on how to kind of prevent being wrongfully accused of a crime? I don't know if that's too vague, but are there certain um, steps where you're just, you know, mistakes that are made maybe with good intentions, but. Yeah, so I think, well, th that's why we try to like change, change the laws. So when, when I spoke about uh, people um, confessing falsely, a law that we try to push in every state is to have um, every time a person sits down and speaks with a police officer to have that recorded from the beginning to the end. So that's a good way to prevent wrongful conviction. If you record it from the beginning to the end, then everybody could see what happened. So there's nothing, you know, bad or, you know, no funny business going on. So that's a good way that we push to prevent wrongful conviction. Um, that, that's, that's- And that's a legal right everybody has. That's a legal so right, yes. Bring out your phone mm -hmm. and someone mm -hmm. says, you can't do that. Oh yes, yeah. so, so, okay, so, now I get the question. So, okay. So we try to have the police officers do that, have their own audio visual. But one good way is if anytime you're being stopped by a police officer, ask for a lawyer, that's your legal right. So don't speak to any, any police officer. Like if you're being questioned without a lawyer, a, a lawyer there, and you don't, even if you think that you don't have enough money, like that's your right. You can get one for free. So that's a, a key way. A lot of people have been wrongfully convicted because they, you know, they were brought in and they were like questioned and asked questions and didn't have a lawyer present. And they're saying things that they don't know that can be used against them. So that's a, that's a good way. Yeah, that's a great question. Any other questions? All right, yes, well. Uh, again, thank you, <laughs> thank Thanks. you for joining Thanks for having us. me. <laughs> okay. um, it's been very informative and mm -hmm. um, yeah, very important work. So thank you for everything that you're doing. Okay. And uh, hopefully we'll have more people getting involved through email campaigns or, well, okay, sorry, I keep asking questions, but it's a nonprofit. So how, mm -hmm. how can people help raise money? Cause I'm guessing that's a big way that you're funded. Yes. Is something like that. So what we do is we have um, get involved, like we, we, we take donations 
So we have people, you know, give like five, ten, twenty dollars a month. But all of that that adds up, you know. So, you know, a key way to raise money is through donations uh, from people. So that's pretty good. Because the the people that you're helping, they're not paying you. Yes, they're not paying us. Yes. So everything comes out of what we're donated. So. So it's yes. important. So mm -hmm. maybe if anyone has a, a cause that they, uh, some people like to donate for birthdays. That's probably an yes on Facebook. Thing. Yeah, yeah, on <laughs> but, Facebook. <laughs> and then, kind of on that note, are there Instagram accounts? I don't know if a lot of kids are on Facebook, but so okay. Instagram that they can follow. Yes. So we're on Instagram. We're at Innocence Project. Um, at Innocence Project, and on twitter we're at just innocence so mm -hmm. all right all right well thank you so much for sharing time with us and for talking ab about a uh, important aspect of the book that we're reading from the desk yes. of joey washington <laughs> mm -hmm. and um yes yes thank you thanks for having me <laughs> thanks thanks again have a good day thank you you too all right all right. Bye. Bye.